You are now listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This is a recording of Dr. Taylor's local radio show, Winning My Race Radio. In this episode, we are discussing vaccines. Cutting edge health information out there today because the fact of the matter is that our bodies were designed to be healthy and were designed with an amazing potential. And if you, the more that you learn, uh, you know, about the bodies, the way the body's designed to heal and function, the more amazed you get. And it's one of those things that the more you learn, the less you know. And you're just amazed at the creation that God has graced us with and blessed us with that is our body. And so we're talking to you each and every week about the five biggest things that can interfere with your body's health or the five biggest areas. I should say. Those are the five essentials of maximized living. And essential number one is your mindset, maximizing your mindset and changing the way that you view and you manage your health. And then also maximizing things like your relationships, your time management, your stress management, things like that, because God's only given us a limited amount of time. We've got to be able to use that to the maximum. Essential number two is maximizing the nerve supply. And that is the way that the body was designed, the way that God designed the body to heal and function. There's one thing that controls everything else, and that's the nervous system. I like to say that it's like the conductor of an orchestra. If you put the best musicians in the world in a room together and tell them all to play, it's going to sound horrible. But you put a conductor in there that can get them in unison, get them playing at the same beat, at the same tone, and the same pitch, it's going to sound beautiful. And the nervous system is the conductor of every single function in your body. We're going to talk about that today with our guest, Daryl. Essential number three is maximizing your quality nutrition, your nutrients and the foods that you're putting in your body. Four is your oxygen, your lean muscle mass, your exercising. And essential number five is minimizing your exposures to toxins and detoxifying. So by looking at these five essentials, we look at the five key areas that will block your God-given potential to heal and be healthy. And so if you joined us last week, we had Daryl in the studio with us here from Scottsdale, Arizona, talking about his child. Grace, who was vaccine injured. And I'll give you a little bit of the background. Daryl has four boys who are the oldest, and their fifth child, Grace, was injured by a vaccine. And he told his story last week about, you know, first it was a hepatitis B vaccine and developed an autoimmune condition, but then after the MMR vaccine, never really developed again. And so this week we want to talk about kind of what they've done, uh, you know, what they've seen from, you know, what, what, started it all, and then kind of their journey that they've taken, and look through the five essentials of maximized living and show how they've utilized each one of these. Because it's cool because where Daryl is, they don't see a maximized living doctor, but the five things uh, that we do are also five really important things that they've done. And I just want to tell you, too, about some of the results that we've seen in our office that we're going to talk about. You know, we have a special patient named Davis, and we love Davis. Uh, And at two years old, long story short, at two years old, he received his MMR vaccine, and he never developed again. He never spoke again. Um, He said hi to me once. And it was awesome. It was one of the coolest things when he said hi. Um, but he never developed again. And what his parents actually discovered was that, you know, amongst an onslaught of other toxins, two weeks before he got his vaccine, he actually fell off of a chair onto his head bent his head backwards, and then two weeks later got his vaccine and never developed again. So what we're going to talk about are the five essentials that we do in our office and how they might even be able to benefit you or somebody you know. Because if you're listening, you may or may not know that Utah is actually the worst state in the nation when it comes to our autism rates. Um, And so we have a lot of kids here too, a lot of big families, but the worst state in the nation. And to me, that's just unacceptable when I know that there's things that we can be doing education wise to prevent this. But then I also know that there are families out there that we can help. So Davis was having about five to 10 seizures a day when we first met him. Uh, And I remember when I first met his mom, I was out at a screening. And this is why we do spinal screenings out in the community. She told me this story. And I said, let's check his spine. Let's start there. We took an x-ray of his spine, started adjusting him. This was a year and a half ago. And in that year and a half, he hasn't had five to 10 seizures 
seizures in the whole year and a half. He's had a couple. He had one one time when we were at home for Christmas for a week, and then his family couldn't get in to get adjusted for a week, so he had a seizure there. But he's had amazing results. No more seizures. He's starting to develop. Even all his therapists, everybody that sees him is saying, what are you doing? His results have been incredible. Um, and so, Daryl, I just want to talk to you about you know the same things that you have done. And even though it's not in our office, it's the same things that we preach. So tell everybody about you know your story with Grace and what you've done. And let's start with the mindset and changing the way that you think about health. How has that changed since you know before you had her? Okay, so I and I want to um, encourage you on all five of those uh, essential living habits because they are important. And what I've we've learned, my wife and I, over the last uh, thirteen or twelve or thirteen years with Grace, is you do have to implement all of them. But we do come become unbalanced sometimes. So we're trying to discover what is working, and and it did take a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. But the first uh, mindset was. Um, changing our, our lifestyle. And I think I, I don't know if you remember from last week, I walked into the doctor's office and I said, you know, what are we going to do? And she puts a bottle of super new Thera on the table and says, take this home. We're going to help her speech development. And I was, I was a bottle of minerals, basically, and mm-hmm. vitamins and minerals. And I was this, no, we need, we need surgery. We need to do something with our little girl yeah. that's, that's dramatic, and we need to fix her now. And that's most people's mindset is, you know, we need to fix this now uh, with a medication or, you know, something that's just going to cover up the symptoms. So talk about that, how that has changed your thoughts on symptoms versus cause, because we look for cause in our office uh, rather than masking symptoms. Absolutely. And that's another thing we look at. We go into a doctor's office nowadays, allopathic medicine versus homeopathic or naturopathic or chiropractic. All three, all, the, all those last ones that we subscribe to now, but you go into an allopathic doctor and he goes, you have eczema. Let's put cortisone on it. That's what they did with Grace. When really we had, we had a toxic element in our little girl that was, that was affecting everything, the skin, the largest organ on your body, right? That's going to say, what is that? What does that skin do? It's going to development. It's going to uh, develop uh, a disease, and that's what was coming out of her body, vitiligo. Mm. Her body could not create pigment anymore, and it was our losing pigmentation, and that was due to uh, environmental uh, toxin in her body. So uh, we have to learn how to adjust our lives to what's being put in our body, right? And and look for a cause. Rather than just say, I have this symptom, I want to get rid of it. Uh, you have to look deeper. And sometimes that requires, you know, advanced testing. And, but you have to look at also what controls it. You know, if you just follow the, the trail back to the brain or what controls a particular organ, a particular process, a particular system in the body. And so that's a good segue for essential number two, the nerve supply. Talk about your experience with that. And so if you're just tuning in for the first time, you're not familiar with this concept, the brain and the nervous system control every single function in the body. So in order for your heart to beat or your lungs to breathe or for a cut on your arm to heal or any of your metabolic processes to happen properly, there has to be a good nerve supply. And when there's interference to that, that will throw off everything. And this is the way that God has designed the body to heal and function. And the more that you learn, the more that you see that this is immaculate design. It's incredible and it's amazing. So what's your experience been there? Because I know that she's been adjusted, you said, and the rest of the family too. So it's not just treating symptoms, it's for wellness reasons. Uh, Talk about that. Absolutely. One of the things that we wound up early on, uh, starting about 10 years ago, was getting adjusted. And I like to explain it. A lot of engineers will understand this, but as an airline pilot, our, uh, our spine has nerves, and those nerves go to every part of your body, your fingertips, your, your hair, your toes. And as an airline pilot, we'll have a caution light. If a wire is pinched or, or changed or there's a problem at a symptom, at a system, we get, we get a caution light. And what do we do? We have it looked at. And that caution light can trip a circuit breaker. Now that system is shut off completely. And, and real quick, if you don't mind me interrupting, so maybe you're sitting out there and he's talking about the caution light. For a lot of you out there, that might be neck pain. That Absolutely. might be headaches. That might be lower back pain. That's any symptom. The symptom is your warning sign. It's the caution light. Absolutely. And not only, I, I agree with that 100% and or for our family, if we're getting a cold. 
or mm-hmm. a flu, or we have a headache. So our doctor, uh, Gordon Ramsay in Phoenix, we go in and he'll see, he'll tell us, come back in twice this week. So we go back in and we adjust that, have our spines adjusted so that that nerve can transmit that message back to that uh, system in our body, whatever it is system that you have, mm-hmm. and, and be corrected. And now you have a good flow of of messages going to the system so that it's working properly. Yeah. And so maybe you're listening to this and you're thinking about, you know, perhaps you don't have, you know, a child on the autism spectrum, but something rang a bell there with the warning signs. You have neck pain, you have headaches, you have digestive symptoms. Maybe you have a thyroid condition. Maybe you have a hormonal imbalance or low energy, any really symptom. When you look at cause, you have to look at what controls it and you have to start with the spine and the nervous system. And that's exactly what we do in our office. So if you're tuning in for the first time, you're not familiar with who we are or where we're located. We're at 1860 South 300 West. It's Align Family Chiropractic. You can find us online under Align Utah on Facebook or on our blog, wealignutah.com or www.alignfamilychiropractic.com. Lots of ways that you can find us. And also the phone number there is 801 467 Two eight five one, And if anybody's out there listening and you haven't had this system checked, I would encourage you to give our office a call and schedule an appointment to get this system checked to see what condition it's in, to see if there's any circuits that aren't firing properly or if there's any interference that could be affecting any level of your health. So make sure to give us a call and get that system checked, no matter no matter if it's for your kids. Cause, and talk about that just for a second. How has that been for your kids or what has changed there? Because we love adjusting kids. You know, I just adjusted uh, a five-pound baby the other day that's just newborn. I have seven-month-old twins. They're very well adjusted. Um, but it's incredibly important for kids in their normal development. Would you agree with that? A hundred percent. All of my kids have been adjusted now for the last 10 years. And even prior to that, we had just done an occasional if we were injured we'd go in and get adjusted yeah. um, but we found that our boys have really for the last 10 years not been sick they might get an occasional cold they go straight to the chiropractor even at driving age from coming home from high school they'll stop by the chiropractor if they're not feeling well yeah they get adjusted and they're well they're healthy and they haven't been vaccinated in in over 10 to 12 years now they eat good they they eat clean. They know what's what to put in their bodies, and of course, um, you know. I think that's a huge factor. We look at that all the time. Get yeah. adjusted. Yeah, I, I was talking with the, a patient about this yesterday, and I could talk all day about this because I love it. Uh, it's one of those things that you know. It, it's something that happens slowly over time, but then you look back and you're like wait a second, I didn't get sick this year. I always get sick th- at the work or at, at, the, at the office. Everybody around me got sick, but I didn't. Wait a second, my kids haven't been sick for a while. And it's one of those light, lights that goes off in the back of your head like, wow, this stuff's really starting to work. Or you know, if you didn't come in with a blaring symptom to begin with, that's one of those longer term things. So it's really cool to see that happening. Uh, essential number three in our office is nutrition and maximizing the quality nutrients. So I'm sure you've got a lot of experience with that. You know, we talked a little bit about gluten-free, casein-free, very common things in the autistic community. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with things like GAPS diet and things like that for gut health. Talk about what you guys have done and what you've seen the best results with and and what you do currently. So one of the very first things that we learned about when uh, Grace was diagnosed with autism was the gluten-free, casein-free. And I just really want to encourage the parents because when we started it was very difficult to walk into a store and go, this is gluten-free, this is not gluten-free. And it really can be overwhelming. One, you're coming down with a diagnosis. Two, you realize that you have to change, if you want to help your children, a lifestyle. And three, that's going to, that can be difficult and overwhelming. And so nowadays you can walk into a lot of Sprouts or some of these other uh, food stores and you can get uh, rice flour, pancake mix, those kind of things that don't have coconut gluten. flour, garbanzo flour, and yeah, we always talk about. Uh, and what Russ has been doing is eliminating a lot of the grains, a lot of grains and sugar. Right. And you know, we're talking about right now for autism, gluten free, casein free, but eliminating the grains—that's for anybody hormone imbalance, thyroid condition, adrenal fatigue, or just weight loss. We want to cut out grains and sugar because they're going to affect our insulin response and cause our body to begin storing fat. So if you've tuned in in the past, you're familiar with cutting out the grains, but now we're talking specifically about gluten. 
and gluten and just other things in our diet, which we had to learn to remove as well. Mm-hmm. Sweeteners, uh, sodas, things that like that that affect digestion. And, and well, uh, we can go into a whole other radio store on that. Sorry. But things in our water. What's in our water that's contaminated? Chlorine. It's a gas. It's a toxic gas. Fluoride that they want to put in uh, that's in the water. And they know they haven't done studies, you know, since the 19- in 1930s, fluoride was used as rat poisoning. Mm-hmm. And it's in our water. And it and affects so, your thyroid. And Yeah, big time. And so does, so does chlorine, any of those uh, hay- halogens, right? Uh, and, and bromine. Yeah. Bromines. And so what we got to do is we have to learn how to take our children and ourselves and we need to start eliminating that. And so I really, again, I want to encourage you not to go, it's overwhelming, I can't do it. Start small. Exactly. We always say take baby steps in the right direction. Right. And if you just keep heading in the right direction, when you turn around, you're amazed at how far you've come. But everybody has to start somewhere. And so we, what we see in our office is we'll see somebody start to transform you know, their, their shopping. They'll maybe come to a shop with a doc with us, or we do a grocery store tour, show them how to read nutrition labels, show them what's in different things, food labels to look for. Um, and but you have to start small. You have to start somewhere. But, yeah, it can be overwhelming. Sometimes it's kind of like uh, trying to take a drink from a fire hose with Absolutely. everything that we're trying to teach people. But, yeah, you just have to start somewhere, and, and, yeah, everybody's in a different place. And you just have to try to be better than you were the day before and not compare yourself to anybody else. Uh, let's, let's keep talking about nutrition. We've got a couple more minutes to talk about nutrition. Um, what about casein? That's a big one. What have you learned about casein? Uh, and, and maybe people aren't familiar with that. That's a protein that's in your dairy products. So there's a couple different types of casein. Um, A1C, is that right? No, tell me the types. Do you know? I, I don't know specifically. I do know that you can just test yourself on yeah. casein. How about going without it for in a couple el- days? A good elimination diet. And you can do that with gluten, too. You can do blood tests. You can do stool samples, different things. But you can do an elimination diet to see if you have any responses to these foods that are, that are really common allergens like casein. Absolutely. And uh, my wife and I, we can... We can attest to that. You just get off of the gluten for a couple of days and then and get back on it. You can feel the bloating and the gas and the headaches. So what kind of results has that gotten for Grace, or what did you notice change, or were there any changes? Or uh, The big thing for Grace especially was gluten. She's not gluten. So if you take her to an allergist and say, is she gluten, is she allergic to wheat? No, but she is intolerant to wheat. Mm-hmm. And that that's a difference. A lot of people are intolerant to uh something specific in her case it was wheat and you could see her go from zero to 100 miles an hour on a on a wheat intolerance test Mm. and so we had to get her off it but there is a um a product that you can to give to a child with a wheat intolerance that will and an antidote yeah that's what you're saying uh so that's kind of what we've learned with gracie we've got her off the case and there's a lot of things that we do with her we have a clean water system on our house and it's not an ro system water because we don't want it to have no mineral we want it to our water to have minerals because we need those is it is not ro with remineralization no, it's not. Okay, it's actually called an H2O water concept system that okay. leaves the minerals in. Okay, that's cool. Um, so with nutrition, I, I just want to talk about some of the things that we've done in talking about starting off on, on a small foot, you know, uh, with with our patient that we talked about before, Davis, and, and he's not the only autism spectrum patient that we've had, but he's been the most committed to the care and or his family has and gotten the most uh, amazing results because they've been the most committed to their care. But it started off small uh, for both of them. I mean, I'm talking like literally almost a year before they really started eating a diet that I might be okay with eating myself, you know, and it took a long time. It was soda, it was candy. And with that, we're talking about sugars, we're talking about additives, we're talking about food dyes. A lot of these things contribute to not only uh, neurodevelopmental diseases, but also, you know, hyperactivity, which can contribute to stimming. And even in your, you know, non-autism spectrum kids, hyperactivity, is that a problem these days? And OCDs. Yeah. And so we see a lot of these chemicals, I'll, I'll talk to people at work and they'll say, my little girl or my little boy has an OCD, they wash their hands, they wash them so often that they're running, they're washing the Rubbing, skin yeah. off. Or they'll have eczema or they'll have ADD or ADHD. And that's on the spectrum. People don't realize that ADD and ADHD is on the spectrum. It's just on the opposite side of mm. the spectrum. Mm. And so we look at that spectrum as, well, that's not autism. It is. It's yeah, just, yeah. So, uh, yeah, and all of those, I have a test here with one of my boys who... Uh, when he was in the fourth grade, the teacher said, you need to put your son, 
they didn't even know what the word was, ADD, uh, ADHD. And I said, oh, y'all doctors know, but you need to put them on Ritalin. Right. And, and that so, was me growing up, too. I was on Concerta for a long time. And uh, oh, I forget the other one right now. It's but, a class 2 amphetamine. Yeah. And you want to put your child same, on a class same, 2 same amphetamine? Same as cocaine, yeah. Yeah. At... at 10 years old? It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So I went and had a hair sample test done on him. And you know what they found in him? What? Copper. High copper. You have a huge copper mine right here. Oh, yeah. Gets in the wells. What do we use? Copper pipes. Yeah, so parents, if you're listening to this, you know, don't rush out for the medication. The medications are incredibly harmful. There's, we could do a whole radio show on the research behind the harm and the danger of these medications. And I know for myself personally, I uh, did not like it. I remember exactly what it did to me. And yeah, I would never encourage anybody to do that. But if you look for the cause, you know, it's not just you have a, you have a misbehaving child. There's things that are interfering. There's heavy metals, there's food dyes, there's sugars, there's lack of exercise. There's all these causations. And we're not looking at those. We're sweeping those under the rug and trying to medicate. And medication is actually, you know, when we talk about, I, I want to just jump right into the next essential of detox. And we're skipping over essential number four, which that's ex exercise, maximize your oxygen and lean muscle mass. But like you said before, it's great that we sweat. And that's an important part of exercise is sweat, but it's also an important part of detox. So talk about that. You know, we talked about the three different uh, passageways for your body to detoxify, different things that you can do. At, you know, you can exercise. That's the best way because that's going to help a lot of things systemically. But infrared sauna, different things, chelation, chelation. things that you've done detox wise that have been positive. So, uh, at Mellow Detox, I could talk for hours, and we do everything, and we've done everything. We've done chelation therapy. We've done oral chelation therapy. We've done uh, transdermal chelation therapy. We've done hyperbaric chamber uh, with Gracie for a year. Uh, we've done, uh, of course, diet. You want There are certain diets that you can use, cruciferous-type vegetables mm -hmm. that you can yeah. eat. People think... Oh, I don't want those onions. But do you know onions are great for detoxification? Garlic? But it's a, it's a society no-no. I don't want my breath to smell. I don't want to stink. We have to sweat. I'll go back to the exercise real quick. We have to sweat and oxygenate our muscles so that we can sweat. Because that's the only way. There's three ways to eliminate toxins. Sweat, fecal, and urine. So sweat for exercise, fecal and urine, we've got to eat a good diet. And then, of course, we've done uh, IV chelation with Gracie as well. And uh, other things, we've done so many protocols, I can't tell you how many. I, I mean, it's for the last 15 years we're doing one now. It's called Juiceroo, and it's just helping Gracie a tremendously. Um, and it, what it's doing is mitochondria. It's mm -hmm. helping the mitochondria because it has resveratrol in it. And we know that resveratrol helps mitochondria. So those, those are the type of chelation therapies that we've done. Some we see help. But we've got to go back to the beginning and go, uh, the causation. Yeah, maybe talk about the causation and some of the testing that you've discovered of what is causing. Because you're not, a lot of these uh, procedures and protocols you've done, you're not shooting in the dark. You've done a lot of testing to find out what you're trying to chelate and what levels are high. So talk about that maybe for some parents that might be listening, what testing they might want to consider. Right. So one of the very first things that we did when we discovered Gracie was um, heavy metal toxicity was we went through a place called Doctor's Data. Now, that's not the computer place. This is what they do. They, they test uh, blood. I mean, it's not blood. It's urine and fecal because you can't do a blood test and check for lead and, and mercury. And we know leads in a lot of products don't go to the dollar store because they have all that stuff in there. Yeah, Chinese plastic products and things Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, well, we hit... But we tested for mercury and lead, and she had antimony, arsenic, beryllium, bismuth, cadmium, copper, lead, nickel, platinum, thallium, tungsten, urim, uh, uranium in her body. Wow. Now, you have to look at what does all that do in the body. People go, oh, well, there's a little bar that comes out, and you say, uh, well, there's not very much, but you've got to take each one of those, and when you add them up, it comes to a certain weight. And how much weight can your body get to before it comes to a tipping point and it breaks? And that's what happened to Gracie. Her body broke at two, at two and a two and a half years old. Yeah, and so speaking of that breaking point, what is it, I'm sure you maybe know off the top of your head, but that a newborn child receives their breaking point, even for thimerosal or mercury, is, isn't it above the breaking point or above the threshold? 
threshold for like a 300 pound man? Oh, yes, absolutely. Remember, it's by body weight. So if you take uh, 25 micrograms of thimerosal and inject it into me, I'm 180 or 170 pounds, but you take a six pound baby, yeah. and they say that at the time is equivalent to eating 14,000 cans of tuna fish in or, one day. Or the fact that even looking at this, you know, it's by body weight, but a five pound baby and a 10 pound baby born in the same room or right next door to each other, they're going to get the same vaccines, even though one is double the weight. So it's not, it's not standardized at all for body weight. So the five pound baby is getting a lot more total toxic burden uh, per body weight. And so to uh, just to advance on that just a little bit, people don't always get that body weight, but I'll tell you, go home, and if you have a bottle of a childhood uh, acetaminophen, right, and your baby's sick, and they go, how much can you take? Read it. Zero to two, consult your physician. Two to four, maybe half a teaspoon. Four and above, a teaspoon. And above adult, two teaspoons. Why is that? Because it's based on body weight. Mm -hmm. But you can walk into a Walgreens or a CVS or a hospital and say, I want a vaccine. And they'll hand up two of them. And they're both the same. They'll give you one and your child one at six months old. And it's the, it's same, the same dose. One. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. So the biggest thing, everybody that's listening, is we just want to encourage you guys to look into this because these are facts that you can find, but you've got to do the research. You've got to listen to the radio show here. You've got to get into the office. You've got to do the online research and look at both sides, not biased, but look into it. And the more you learn, the more you know, and the more you can make a better decision for yourself. So, Daryl, it's been a real pleasure the last two weeks. I'd uh, love to hear your story and love to hear you know what you've done. And for anybody that's out out there that's listening that maybe you know has lost hope or you know just doesn't ha has gone through the same story and just feels like maybe there's there's no more hope or they've tried everything uh, one last time uh, what would you say to anybody that's considering calling into our office uh, or getting their kids spine checked starting some nutritional protocols starting some detox protocols what would you say uh, definitely just get started and just remember the Lord the Lord's in charge of absolutely. everything right absolutely glad you added that thank you. thank you so much everybody be blessed this week as always maximize your lives and we'll talk to you next week you have been listening to the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick if you could please do us a favor and give us a five star rating and a review on what you think of the podcast we appreciate your feedback be sure to like us on Facebook follow along on Twitter Instagram and of course, subscribe on YouTube. Thank you for listening to the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Kirk. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything, health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.